hi and welcome to another preview from the spring 2013 edition of Project Parade over at stampacademy.com. Today's project is a hearts and flowers card that highlights some of the accessories from the spring mini catalog. So we have these beautiful roses here and then a couple of framelits and some embossing folders and then this is our coordinations card stock. To get started, we're going to be using a half sheet of very vanilla cardstock, and then you're going to put that into your score tool or your trimmer, and you're just going to score that at four and a quarter. We're going to begin with the Textured Impressions Frame Tulips Embossing Folder. They don't come in our stamp cases, but this is a great storage trick for you. This is just um, one of our empty stamp cases, and I store one on each side. So if you are a member of our Technique weekly you will see that in there so we're going to begin with the embossing folder and what you'll notice is the Stampin Up logo is on this side only and that will tell you that that's the front side of your embossing so it will emboss toward the label so that's a good thing for you to remember you're going to line this up in here and it does make a border so you want to be pretty even here but you can see right through so you can just line up your cardstock until you get equidistant borders once you're happy with the placement of your cardstock you're going to put your Big Shot and then your Textured Impressions folder is going to be on tab one. You're going to put down one of your cutting plates, put your embossing folder on top, and then put your second cutting plate on it and then run this through the Big Shot. When it comes out you're going to have that framed tulips design right there on the front of your cardstock. And then you're very gently going to go back on that score line that you made, but you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to ruin the embossing here. So I'm just going to do it first with my fingers. And then when I have it where I want it, I'm just going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to carefully score that edge just so I have a nice flat score line. Next we're going to start with our coordinations cardstock. This is three and an eighth by four and three eighths and then your measurements are always in your PDF which is below this video. So if you'll notice the top piece here has a textured finish whereas this side has a smoother finish. I want to emboss toward the texture and as we showed you before that would mean that I would want the textured side on the logo side and we're going to line that up carefully so that it's straight and then we're going to put it between two cutting plates on our multi-purpose platform that is on tab one and run this through the big shot when it comes out you're going to see this textured impression on it and you're going to see the white peeking through this is a special kind of paper that's designed to do that our normal papers are dyed through and through so that even if you tear them you still have that same color throughout this is a different type of cardstock and what we're going to do is we're going to sand that and we're going to do that using our sanding tool so these are just velcroed on here so I'm carefully going to go over this and you can go as strong or as lightly as you like I don't want to go too hard on it because this does weaken the fibers in the paper and I don't want the paper to tear I, if I'm going to distress it I want to distress that by myself so you're just going to do that and then just take off some of that excess and then if you would like to you can do the sides as well once you have that done you're going to put that aside and you're going to take a scrap of very vanilla cardstock now we're going to be using the set hearts of flutter and this comes with matching framelits and we're going to be using this little banner framelit you're going to take your multi-purpose platform and it's going to be fully closed you're going to put down a cutting plate put down your very vanilla cardstock your framelit is going to be ridge side down, that's the cutting side, and then you're going to put another cutting plate on top and you're going to run this through the big shot. When it comes out, you're just going to pop that out and it's a good idea to put this framelit away right away because you don't want it to get lost. You're going to go back to your vintage wallpaper textured impressions folder and you're going to take that small cutout and you're going to sandwich it in between you're going to sandwich that between two cutting plates and then you're going to go to your multi-purpose platform and you're going to put it on tab one and then you're going to run this sandwich through the big shot when it comes out you're going to have a nicely embossed banner and the reason that I cut it first is when it goes through the rollers in the big shot it does tend to flatten the embossing so you do want to do that first 
So now to assemble this, we've cut this so that it fits perfectly inside of that tulip frame. So you're gonna line this up so that it fits perfectly. And once you have it placed where you'd like, you're going to just press to adhere. You're then going to take that little banner and you are just going to adhere it right up in the upper right hand corner. We're going to be using a stamp set called Trust God. You could certainly use any stamp set that you like. I've mounted the one that says each one of us is God's special work of art. And I'm using a clear mount stamp set. I do prefer the clear mounts because they take up a lot less space. I'm using a classic Stampin' Pad. This is not one of our newer pads. This is the old version. So because I want to emboss this and it's an old pad, we're going to use something that I call the cheater embossing technique. Now, if you subscribe to our weekly techniques or if you're a gold member, you'll know this technique. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your stamp and you're going to ink it in your Versamark pad. Then you're going to stamp it onto your regular pad and then directly onto your paper. Now, I'm not too worried about the placement and if this is straight because I'm going to be cutting it out. I'm then going to take some clear embossing powder and I'm just going to pour that right on top. I'm going to shake off the excess and then I'm going to use my heat gun to heat that up. So now that I have that embossed, I am going to use my framelits to cut it out. So when we use framelits, we use a multi-purpose platform that is fully closed. We put our cutting pad down and then I'm going to put my greeting here because that's what I want to cut out. I'm going to go to my Hearts of Flutter Framelits dies, and again, they don't come in the stamp cases. They do come in a nice little envelope, but I prefer to put them in the stamp cases. So I'm going to be using the scalloped heart. Again, my ridge is cutting side down. I'm going to center this over the greeting until I'm satisfied with the placement, and then I'm going to trap it in there using a post-it note. I will cover that with my cutting plate, and I'm going to run this whole sandwich through the Big Shot. When it comes out, it's going to have that nice scalloped edge. And to accent that, I'm going to use a Stampin' Sponge, and I'm going to go right into that color, and I'm just going to sponge my edges. So now, this is what I have so far. I'm probably going to place my heart somewhere around there. And now I'm using my absolute favorite accessory from the new mini, which is the Vanilla 5 8 inch Flower Trim. And these are these gorgeous roses that are attached to some netting here so that you can place them over your card and then adhere them down. So you can do four here and certainly just stretch it out a little bit to save or you could squash them in and do five. I'm going to do four and I have my ribbon scissor and this scissor is only used to cut ribbon so it stays nice and sharp. And then I'm going to use a couple of blue dots. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take each rose and I'm going to press it to one of my glue dots because I want them all to stay when I press them onto the card. So now that I have a glue dot behind each rose, what I'm going to do is just line this up at the edge here, and then I'm just going to stretch it a little bit because I want to make sure that it's right across there. And you can kind of mash these and they still stay beautiful, which is awesome. So once that's done, you can then take your greeting and you're going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and you're going to put those right there on the back of that heart. Once you remove the adhesive backing from the dimensionals, you're going to place your heart and then just adhere. The next thing that we're going to do is create a bow and I'm going to be using our rhinestone brads to do that and I'm just going to use one of the small ones because you're not really even going to see it. I'm going to take my paper piercer, put that right in the center there to split those brad legs and then I'm just going to open them up like that. I'm going to take my crochet trim and I'm just going to form just a loose bow and I'm going to use my ribbon scissor again just to cut this edge. The next thing I'm going to do is just take this whole bow and I'm going to just cram it right in the center there and then I'm going to use my fingers to wrap that brad leg right around the center of this bow. And what that's going to give me is a perfect little bow. I'm going to take my ribbon scissor again and just trim the edge a little at an angle. Do the same thing to the other side. 
Once that's done, I'm going to take one of my glue dots again, and I'm going to press it to the back of that, and I'm going to place that right there onto the top of that heart. Now you can certainly leave that as a rhinestone if you'd like, but since my theme here is going to be pearls, I'm going to change it to a pearl. So our pearls come on these great sheets and they have all these different size pearls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of different ones. And this is our largest pearl. This comes as a sheet and it's the large basic pearl. So what I'm going to do is pick that up with my scissor and you can use your paper piercer or whatever you like. I like to use my scissor and you're going to just put that in place and press and it's got adhesive on the back of it so it's going to stay exactly where you put it. I'm going to do the same thing with this pearl and I'm going to put that right there at the bottom and then I'm going to go to the next size pearl and I'm going to put it in the next scallop and I'm going to match the other side to it as well. I'm then going to take the smallest pearl and I'm going to pick that one up and I'm going to put that right next to it and match the other side. Then I'm going to take another one of these larger pearls and I'm going to cover that little rhinestone piece so that it looks like a pearl instead of a rhinestone. When you're through, you have a great feminine card with some really beautiful embellishments from our spring mini catalog. This has been your Project Parade project for today. If you like what you see, you can visit us over at stampacademy.com. Our spring edition of Project Parade is about to begin. And as always, if you have questions for us, we are at mail at stampacademy.com.